Eagle fans, before we start today's video, go ahead and pick up your official Philadelphia Eagles face mask covering right now. Chatsports.com slash Eagles mask, the place to go ahead and pick it up. Tons of great options. The single face mask or also the Carson Wentz two-pack. They're all there. Link is down below in the description box. Chatsports.com slash Eagles mask. All right, so as we always do to finish up the weekend here, we're going to go ahead and continue, because we did this just the other day, continue answering your guys' mailbag questions. We'll start with Joe, who says, do you think we will trade or keep Alshon Jeffrey before these, se these season starts? 100% keep. I, I, there's zero indication that they're looking at trading Alshon Jeffrey. They can't really do it right now because he's still injured. He's on the pup list, but he's getting close to coming back. I think he's going to be back and healthy and excited for the year. I think that the, the whole drama last season in terms of calling out Carson Wentz and then saying he didn't and then not playing and just kind of not being a, 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 a great teammate is behind him. Him and Carson Wentz have talked about it. And Doug Peterson, I think, is excited to see him on the football field saying, quote, he's working extremely hard. He's doing his on-land running. We've increased that. He looks really good. He's feeling really good. And we're hoping to get him out there soon with the team at some point here in the near future. When Alshon Jeffrey is healthy and when Alshon Jeffrey uh, is motivated to play, because I think that was partially an issue last year. I can't say that officially, but I, I think it partially it was. He wasn't a, a big fan of his current situation. He's a great player. I mean, he's a very, very good player, and the Eagles depth chart at wide receiver looks fantastic with him in there. It's still good without him, and they'd be fine without him, but would you rather have Alshon Jeffrey or J.J. Ortega Whiteside, right? Trying to buy those, those, those red zone targets, guys, you can just throw the ball up to and get you a catch in traffic. Alshon Jeffrey is definitely that guy. I think they're going to keep him 100%. I do not see a trade happening unless he were to demand one, and if he were going to demand a trade, he would have done it already. It's too close to the start of the NFL season. So let me know what you guys think. There's a pinned comment down below. If you trade or keep option Jeffrey right now, type T down below for trade, type K down below for keep. All right, next question here comes from Gabriel, who says, I think Sean Bradley will be an Eagle starter this season. Not at the beginning, maybe later on if the Eagle linebackers aren't that good, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, for as good as we've heard and for as good as Bradley has been so far in training camp, there's still a massive learning gap right now at linebacker in the Jim Schwartz offense. The Philadelphia Inquirer had a great, great write-up on this a couple of weeks ago. They said, quote, it isn't that the rookie group hasn't underachieved, it's that starting week one at linebacker or safety for defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz is a formidable task given this year's truncated preparation period. The big key on this is the final sentence. Given this year's truncated per, uh, pre preparation period, Sean Bradley needs reps. Sean Bradley needs to get in there and have live tackling. Now, they have live tackling opportunities. They do a live 11 on 11s, but it's nowhere near what he would have gotten in two to three quarters for four straight weeks in the preseason. I've said this week and week and week. I mean, all the time. It's it, it's true. You've got to be able to get reps. You've got to be able to get in there and live tackle. Have you been watching Hard Knocks? I'm a big Hard Knocks fan. They're doing the Rams and Chargers. You look at a guy like Clay Johnston, the seven-round draft pick out of Baylor. You watch him on Hard Knocks. He's not getting enough reps to make the football team. He's just not getting enough reps, and it's not his fault. It's not the coach's fault. It's the fact that there's no preseason. So Sean Bradley is not going to be ready week one. He might be ready later on in the NFL season. He's going to obviously make the football team. He's, he's been really good. He'll be a special teams guy, kick coverage, punt coverage, but he won't start week one. And the question really is how much, how, how long will it take for him to either get in there or how long will it take for one of the starting linebackers to struggle enough for him to get in there? So don't hold your breath, even though he has been good. I just don't see it happening because it's just there's just not enough time to, to, to learn to play linebacker in the NFL. Uh, Paul says, I would go to a game if I was wearing a mask and six feet away from everyone. Okay, listen, I 100% would too, even though Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, the state of Pennsylvania, basically said no fans are allowed inside Lincoln Financial Field, at least for the start of the NFL season, which, of course, if, is, is disappointing but maybe they'll let people go in there at a later point in the NFL season. We'll talk about that here in a second. And if they do, then you go ahead and pick up a mask with the Eagles logo on it. That way you just don't wear some 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 random mask if you go to an Eagles game eventually or just are out and about. Wear an official Eagles mask. Link down below in the description box, chatsports.com slash Eagles mask. They got a bunch of different options. You can just buy one. You can buy a two-pack. You can buy a three-pack. There are a bunch of ones on sale as well. They have a youth face mask. They have a t-shirt comp. They got there's so many options down below. They're all flashing on your screen right now. Link is down below in the description box. Pick one up right now because I bet they will allow fans at some point. They'll probably have to, probably have to wear a mask once you get an official Eagles one right now. Um, Neil says, Thomas, out of 65,000 paying season ticket holders, which 20,000 are you allowing into the, into the link? How are you po uh, policing the concession areas, the bathrooms? You trust Jalen Mills to hold things down after watching him play the last four years? You must be the most trusting person on the face of the earth. Wow, okay. 
That's a lot to unpack. Okay, well, let, let, let's start with the fans in the stands. I guess I said that last week I would totally allow 20,000 people at, at the link, and I would. I, I would still allow that, despite the fact that they have officially come out and said that there will be no f fans at the stands in Lincoln Financial Field, like, like we said, until further notice. They didn't rule it out for the latter part of the season, but of course, it doesn't seem like they will be there anytime soon. What I am suggesting is, is why can't you socially distance 20,000 people in a 65,000 capacity stadium? I think it's a little bit more than that at Lincoln Financial Field. You're telling me that you couldn't get people six feet apart with masks uh, to watch an any, any, any Eagles game at all? I think you could even make them wear a mask whenever they go in, temperature check, sign a waiver, then whenever they're getting concessions or going to the bathroom, you wear a mask, and then when you go down to your seat, your distance far enough away, you can take the mask off. I would totally be fine with that. Some people might not be, but everyone keeps telling us that masks and social distance are the, the solution. I think that it is as well, and we do that at a lot of our workplaces right now. You wear a mask, you go into a grocery store, you wear a mask. How is that different than going to a concession stand at an Eagles, uh, at, at an Eagles game in Lincoln Financial Field? It's not. You wear a mask, you keep your distance, and you're just fine. In terms of policing people, you just got to have people out there like you would any Eagles game, just, you know, making sure that people are wearing the mask. Hey, put the mask on. Like, hey, slide it up. Most people do. It's not a big concern. Um, this was uh, the Eagles president in terms of uh, uh, if fans would be on there. It's an interesting quote I'll go ahead and read for you guys here. Well, we know that in the start of the season, those seats may be empty. We know that they'll be with us in spirit, just as they are all across the country, all across the globe for every Eagles game. They'll be cheering us on, and we're going to feed off their energy. We're just going to have to have a little, do things a little bit differently, just like we've been doing everything a little bit differently here in 2020. Again, I, I'm not arguing why they shouldn't have fans early on, but they're not ruling it out for later on in the year. And so I say, why not, at some point during the uh, season, allow a select number, whether it's 10, 15, 20,000, and let them go ahead and watch. And you ask, which 20,000 are they allowing? Well, you go ahead and do season ticket holders first, and then you can just do a first come, first serve. And if you have the money to pay for a ticket, then you get to go. And if you don't, then you watch on TV. I have no problem watching on TV. I'd have no problem going as well. This is not, to me, a big deal. Uh, I've gone too long on this, but in terms of Jalen Mills, um, he's been great in training camp. He's been a very, very good leader off the football field for Philadelphia at least the past couple of years, despite his limited number of playing time. I'm not worried about Jalen Mills at all. I am trusting of Jalen Mills because the coaches and players trust him to fill Malcolm Jenkins' shoes. And if that's not enough for you, then I don't know what is. Um, if and when they do allow fans to go ahead and be in the stands, we'll have the full coverage here on Philadelphia Eagles now. So go ahead and subscribe. Click that big red subscribe button down below. We're trying to get to 13,000 subs here on what I think is the best Eagles channel on YouTube. Um, let's see here. Let's go quick. Lee Stidham says, what do you think of DJX burning Slay? Okay. You hear this all the time, right? You, you follow training camp updates. You've been hearing a lot that Darius Slade's been getting beat in one-on-ones. Have you been hearing that? Have you? If you haven't, well, it's true. He has been getting beat. Rager beat him a couple of days ago. Jackson's getting the better of him. People are panicking about Darius Slade. Stop. One-on-one -on -one drills are built to help the wide receiver. The entire training camp process is built to help the wide receiver. Slay is a veteran. He's a seasoned veteran. I think he's going to go all out for every single play, every single time. One-on-ones are tough, especially when you have no idea what's going on in terms of no safety help over top, no linebacker, no... It's all these different coverages schemes that, that, that they use. Do not worry about DJX burning Slay. It's good for DJX. I mean, it shows his speed, but we know Deshaun would do that to anybody if he stays healthy. This is not a problem with Darius Slay. I'm not worried about it at all. It's good that, that Sean Jackson is healthy, and I'm not worried about uh, Darius Slay getting burned multiple times because it's one-on-ones. It happens in one-on-ones. DNs beat offensive linemen in one-on-ones all the time, and yet in reality, one-on-one -on -one is not exactly what happens every single snap because you can have help, you can have chips, you can have all those sort of things, so don't worry about it. Um, Andrew says, what happened to Greg Ward? Nothing. W what do you mean, what happened to Greg Ward? I mean, he hadn't been talked about a lot this offseason, but he's there. And he's performing, and he's in kick cover, and he's doing punt returns and kick returns, and he's been uh, a very consistent wide receiver. He's making the roster. I mean, like, what, what are we saying here? He's uh, did anything happen to him? Not that I know of. No, I think he's totally fine. He's going to make the roster. He's got more competition. High towers there. Quiz Watkins has looked pretty good. Uh, Burnett's looked good as well. Obviously, Jackson and Rager. They got a lot of uh, receiver. JJ right there, Whiteside. They have a lot of options, but he's going to be there. And I think Carson Wentz trusts him from what he was able to do last year. So I would not worry about it. Give me your over under though for his touchdowns. I, I'm uh, over under four. Let's put it at that. I think over under four touchdowns for Greg Ward in 2020. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. All right, all to me out for today here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. I am Thomas Mott. I hope you guys enjoyed both of these mailbags. I know that you guys do. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I'm a first for Philadelphia Eagles Now. I'm Thomas Mott signing off to the rest of your day.